Biggest World Productions. Bless you, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is Minister Williams. Most of you know me as Biggs the Preacher. Uh, today, um, I don't have a fancy podcast or video for you today. I just have a, a Bible class uh, I have with my family in my home. Today, we're going to be um, addressing some issues, some uh, rumors, and some things that has been uh, being discussed around town concerning me and my family. Um, quick warning that this video or this Bible class may trigger some of you. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to say uh, may cause you to want to shut down and even cut the video off. But um, I'm asking you uh, to be patient to listen to the whole matter and then after that you can make whatever judgment you like Uh, I'm a man that believes in standing on truth not the opinions of other people but the truth of the word of God so without any further ado here's Bible class with the family God bless you I thank God for his word I thank God for just Lord, I thank God for just uh, the truth of his word. The Bible says the truth shall set us free. And I can truly say today that I'm free. I'm free from condemnation. I'm free from people. I'm free from people people's opinions. People religious opinions of me. Because I know that everything I follow follow me because the book I can find in the book so today we're going to talk about some things we're going to address some issues there's been a lot of talk going on around as you all know a lot of talk going on around town you know and, and, and it's really funny to me it's really funny to how folk can jump to conclusions without even really knowing the whole matter of the situation. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 8.13, he who asks or judges a matter before he hears it, it is a folly and a shame on him. So to you that have, that have been jumping to conclusions, shame on you. But tonight, we're going to address them. I don't need nobody spreading rumors. Talking because I'm a man, I can talk for myself. Since y'all want to know what's going on, I'm about to let you know what's going on. My wife's people been talking. My people been talking. But now it's time to let this book do the talking. Amen. I talk going on around town that uh, Ellis done jumped ship, the devil done got him. He he's now one of those uh, Hebrew Israelite people that stand on the corners, hollering at white folks, cussing them out, calling them demons and devils. No, that is not who I am. It's not what I represent. Them people are not even Israel. You could, you could have a title, just like a lot of Christians. They got the title Christian, but they don't live as Christians. You could have the title Israel, right? But right. not be Israel. The Bible said, not everyone that said that Israel is Israel. So we're going to address this issue today. Other than jump ship, the devil didn't got him to him, and he became. Hebrew Israelite. Now, I'm not one of those black Hebrew Israelites that's still on the corner cussing out folk, telling all white people they're going to hell, are, are they the devil? No. But at the same time, I am Israel. You get there later. It's 
funny to me that folk know who I am, supposedly, know who we are. The truth is, a lot of people don't even know who they are. Do you know who you are, Pastor? Mm-hmm. Really, really. Like, far as salvation goes, do you know who you are? Like in the natural church. spiritual. What what title do they give you once you get saved? Christian. Christian. Where did you get that from? Your mama. Where did you get that from? My mom. Where did your mama get that from? Her mom. Where did her mama get it from? Her mom. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We are what folks tell us that we are. The thing is, we don't think twice about it. We don't think about it. We get to be more of it. <coughs> we don't. Uh, we basically are who people told us that we are. You gotta understand that we are trapped in this Roman European system, and since they told you that you were Christian, that's who we are. Let me warn you. Before we get started, that there are going to be some triggers. I'm going to say some things that don't trigger you. And in your mind, where your mind works, you're going to want to shut down and cut and cut me off and not going to want to hear nothing I got to say. But if you just listen to the end, you can understand where I'm coming from. It's all about getting an understanding, right? So, since folks are talking, they ain't got to talk to them. They can get it from the horse's mouth, right? Right. Just got a call uh, a few minutes ago from a brother. What's going on? I'm about to give it to you from the horse's mouth. I explain. Everybody that said that Israel is not Israel. It's funny how folks know who they are. I know who we are. But don't know who they are. So let's get an understanding of who I am. This Bible here, it come, it come, it come a trigger right here. This Bible is a history book of the Hebrew Israelites. It's not a history book of the Christians. Y'all get that? Y'all understand that this is not a book about the Christians. You understand that, Pastor? You understand that? This book is not a book about the Americans. It's not a book about the, the Romans. It's not a book about the Chinese or the Mexican. This book is a book, a history book about the Hebrew Israelites and their God. This book was written by Israel, for Israel, and then the Bible says at the end of the day, all of who? Israel is going to be saved. So let's take a, a history trip about who Israel, uh, who is in this book. We all go to, well, y'all go to church Sunday after Sunday, whatever the Bible, got the Bible class. And you read this book, you're supposed to read this book every time you go. Well, let's get a quick rundown, a history lesson of who, who's in this book that you are following. First of all, we got God Himself, the creator of the world, an all powerful being. And God calls Himself uh, the one and only true deity of the world. He is the figurehead of who Israel. We got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the patriarchs of the Hebrew Israelites. We got Moses, the custodian of the law. What was he? A Hebrew Israelite. David, King David. What was he? A Hebrew Israelite. I want y'all to participate. Solomon. What was he? A Hebrew Israelite. Elijah. Jeremiah, Elisha, uh, Samuel, 
all the prophets in the book, Daniel, the, the, the Hebrew boys, they were all what? Hebrew Israelites. Now let's keep on to the New Testament. The disciples, the apostles, they were what? Hebrew Israelites. Now, now listen. Now I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. Not one time have you heard any of them say that I am a Christian. Now one time that they said that they are Muslim, a Buddhist, they clearly claim to be the seed of Abraham who is the Hebrew Israelites. Now, Jesus himself, Yahshua, came he was, the, in the Bible, they call him the seed of David. Once again, David was what? A Hebrew Israelite. So Jesus was what? A he, he even said in his word that he came not to nobody else but to the lost sheep of Israel. And we're going to get into this because I know a lot of y'all see triggered, triggered already. A lot of y'all feel like because I said Israel, I'm talking about uh the color of skin. Put your hand up. Israel, it could be a white, black, pink, yellow, green, orange person. As long as they be in Christ, obey and keep his commandments, the Bible said you are who Abraham seed. It's not about your bloodline, per se. But it's more about your spirit and your obedience. And then you can become Israel. So since we said all that, let's deal with Paul. Because Paul is the, the champion uh, of the Christian faith. They, they, the, the, the Roman Catholic is called Paul uh the first pope which was a lie and the christians say because of paul's teachings he taught that god's laws were done away with paul never taught that god's laws were done away with he taught that the curse of the law or the law of sin and death was no longer uh they were no longer needed to do those sacrifices of the law of sin and death, which was the killing of both goats and bulls, and sometimes sin even uh, caused a sentence of death on us as individuals. No longer was the blood of people, blood or bulls or goats needed, because Jesus died on the cross, and his blood was enough blood for all of us forever. He said that law was done, but God's law was never done. But the church say that Paul teaches that the law is done away with. You no longer have to follow God's law. So basically, nowadays, it's all about self. It's all about uh, self-righteousness. I do what I want to do because they say it don't take all that. As long as you come to church every day, every Sunday, every weekday, you, you, you do your religious hand claps, you sing in the, on the praise team, you show up to church, even though there's no change, there's no deliverance, there's no accountability, as long as you do that, you are right. So, Y'all say Paul was the champion of the Christian faith. Another trigger right here. Paul never claimed to be a Christian. Nor is the religion of Christianity mentioned nowhere in the Bible. I know a lot of y'all right now. You better cut me off because I see it there. I'm going to say it again. The religion of Christianity 
is nowhere in the Bible. Eli. Ooh wee. It's about to get hot up in here. Uh, you guys need some water or something? Uh, a towel? Because it's about to get hot up in here. Um, I just want to interject for a minute. A lot of uh, the saints say, well, I follow God's law. I just don't follow Moses' law. Well, Moses was only the mouthpiece that God used because the people did not want to face God himself. The people said, Moses, you talk to God and just give us what God said. Just deliver the message to us. So the people called it the law of Moses because Moses delivered the law. Uh... Moses did not write the law. Moses did not write the commandments. Yah, Elohim, God Almighty himself did that. Moses just recorded it and presented it to the people. Um, I thought I just may add that in there for any confusion. But nevertheless, on with the rest of the lesson. Acts 11, 26. Now, we're going to find out where the disciples that were Hebrews first got the name Christians from. Where did it stem from? It's on paper you want to read, but you can read it from your phone. Acts 11 26, read it. And when he found them, he brought them into Antioch. Okay. When he found them, okay, this is Paul, he was looking for his brethren. That were in Antioch. Go ahead. And it came to pass. And it came a to whole year that he is, that they, a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And, it's, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples, the Hebrew disciples, the followers of Messiah, was first called Christians where in Antioch. Anybody know what Antioch is? Antioch is is in the province of Rome. The same place where the Roman Catholics started the religion of Christianity. Because they didn't want to start the religion of Christianity. The same place where Constantine I, I, I don't know if y'all remember some time ago I taught about Constantine. They were first called Christians in Antioch which is Rome. This is the same place where the Catholic Church comes from. Next slide, uh, Eli. And this is the same place where the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine established himself and what now listen what I'm saying. He was a pagan Roman Emperor. Constantine, he established himself as the head of the church in year 1312 when he claims to have had a vision of the of, of the cross sitting inside the sun with the words wrote over it with this sign ye shall conquer which made the new religion of Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. Now understand this. Christianity wasn't a religion until 313 years after Jesus died. To let you know that none of the disciples ever called themselves Christians. We're going to find out in, in a minute. Paul never called himself Christian. As a matter of fact, Christian was used in the same way where the N-word is used for black people as a derogatory term to degrade them. Now, this man said that he saw a sign in the sky. And the sign said, in, 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 uh, he said he, he saw a cross inside of the sun. And he, and, and, and he said, the vision said, and with this sign you should conquer. Now this sounds a lot like the 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 
first seal on Revelation. Uh, Revelations. Next slide. Look at that. Revelations six and two. Read it for me, DJ. And I saw the Lord a white horse, and that sat on him. Oh, and he said, and now, ah, and he that sat on him had a boat, and the crown was given unto him. And he went, he went forth conquering and, and to conquer. Now, this man Constantine said, he saw a sign in the sky telling him to conquer in this sign. Revelation said there was a man sitting on a white horse. Go back to the other slide, Jay. Eli. <laughs> A man sitting on a horse, white horse. This man had a bow in his hand. He said he saw the, the cross inside of the sun with a sign to conquer. The Bible said the first seal was going to be a religious man, basically that was going to conquer through deception. <coughs> Ever since then, the Christian church has become one of the biggest religions or organizations in the world. Right? The sun. Go to the next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Here we go. The sun is where you get the Sunday worship from. Because Constantine was a Sun God worshiper. Right? This, normally you see this picture right here, and they say that's Jesus. Right? That's a picture of Constantine, supposedly. With the sun behind his head because he was a sun worshiper. That's where you get Sunday worship from. And in the cross. I'm reading this. Say, Did you know no one in the first few centuries? In the first three centuries, celebrated Messiah's birth at all. It was first created by sun worshiping pagans in 33 in, in 336 AD. The person in the image is the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, and behind him is a rising is a rising sun, not a halo. How many how many churches have you been to? You saw this same picture sitting in people's churches. Y'all are old, y'all are younger, old, younger than me. But growing up in, our, in a church, we had pictures like this everywhere. Where did it come from? It came from the Roman Catholics or the Roman Christian organization. The sun is where you get Sunday worship from. Changing the Lord's Holy Sabbath to His Holy Day which is Sunday. And this happened in 321 AD when he changed the Sabbath of the Lord to his Sabbath with Sunday because he was a sun god worshiper. Now I know for a lot of people that's going to be a hard pill to swallow, but all you got to do is do your own research. Why would God ever change his Sabbath? This, this is the same God that said, I, I'm God and I change not. I will not alter not one word that come out of my lips. It's the same God. And I got more. In the book of Deuteronomy, Eli, do I got the uh, book of Deuteronomy up there? Yep. It said, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all nations. This is talking about Israel. Israel was scattered among all the nations because of our disobedience because we would not follow the laws of God. We would not keep his commandments. And, this, and it's the same thing today. We were brought Deuteronomy 2864 said the Lord shall scatter thee among all people or, or all nations from one end of the earth unto the other. And thou and there thou shalt serve other gods, whether, whether neither thou or thy fathers have known, even gods of wood and stone. Now go back to the other. Matter of fact, go for it, Eli. The crucifix, the cross, 
That's an image of wood. How many churches have you seen with the wooden cross in there? Now, people are like, no, that don't matter. But the Bible said we was going to serve. Listen, I've been to churches where you, well, there has been crosses over the poor people. And we have actually went to the altar, knelt down, and prayed to these crosses. We have actually had pictures of the crucifix in our home. When the Bible tells us not to make an image, not, not to uh, try to make an image uh, uh, of things that are in heaven or in the sea. But why are we making images? And not only are we making images, we are, sometimes we pray to these crosses. Sometimes we wear these things on our bodies. Even symbols and signs. I know the Lord got them, got them to me about the, the, the change with all these different charms and stuff. We do stuff because we are, it's just something that we do because we we are in a, 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 a nation where our ancestors came to because of disobedience. And we have learned the ways of them. But God always wanted his people to be different. That's why the Bible tells us to come out from among them and be ye separated. But how can we separate if we don't know what to separate from? But it's in the book. It's in the Bible, but we don't read it. And if we do read it, we say, that stuff done away with. Oh, that don't matter. Once again, when did God's word change? When did God start conforming to us? The cross. Go to the next one, Eli. This is where you get the queen of heaven from. This is the stone. The Catholics call this Mother Mary and Jesus. But this is in the body. The Bible calls her the queen of heaven. Not the queen of uh, Shemaim or the holy heaven, but the, the the heavens, the air. Basically, see, she's a demonic spirit. The Catholic, the, 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 the Christian church, I don't say Catholics, because we don't, most, most Christians don't do this. They pray to her. They worship her. Just to let you know that the Christians from the beginning of time were not holy people. They were pagan worshipers trying to combine God's ways with the ways of the pagans to try to get more people to come in. They tried, they wanted to keep peace basically. So they started to conform and they had a smart idea. If we still celebrate how they celebrate but just put Christ on the front of it, just put some religious stuff on the front of it now we can get the the converts to do the same thing. This is where we get our worldly holidays from. All this stems from Tammuz, Nimrod, Constantine, uh, Samaranus. This is Eshtar. She's called many names. Eshtar. Samuel Reigns, the Queen of Heaven, the baby's Tammuz, the son, the son, supposed to be the son of the son God. But the Catholics call this Mary and Jesus, and, and, and they worship this lady. And Daniel, I, I don't have the scripture, up, but in the book of Daniel, I believe this. Daniel 7 25, I believe. The Bible speaks of a religious system. Listen to me now. I, I, should, I should have put the scripture down because I, I like to show proof that stuff is in the Bible. But I believe in Daniel 7 25. The Bible speaks of a religious system that's going to rise up. And they will look to change God's laws. In times. 
Read for me. This is the NIV. It says, Read out. Uh, Daniel 7025 says, He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws, and they will be placed under his control for a time. Stop, stop. They will try to, to change his what? Sacred what? Laws, uh, festivals, and laws. Time now. Last week we just had a Bible that's about the, fit, the feast of God, right? Mm -hmm. Have they not changed his sacred festivals? So much so that we don't even teach about God's festivals. But the church teach, can, can teach about Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day. And... Read it one more time. He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws. That's good. Let me read this paragraph right here. Throughout the centuries, now this is, when you look up the history of the, of the Roman church, you can find this. If you do your research, you can find this. Throughout the centuries of, of Rome's existence, watch this, the popes have regularly claimed to be divine. The popes claims the position of God on earth and they say they have the ability to judge or the power to judge the power to forgive the power to excommunicate angels and they have the power to change or modify God's law now in day we just read of a religious system that was going to look to change God's laws and times. This is where we are right now. The Catholic Church believes that they have the power of God on earth. They have the power to judge, the power to forgive, the power to excommunicate angels and they have the power to change God's laws and times well to be honest with you they have changed God's laws and times it's strange to me that the church can keep teach and preach Constantine laws and so called Sabbaths and feast days in which you you all call the holidays, but the church don't keep, they don't teach, or even preach God's laws, God's Sabbaths, God's holy days or feast days, which are commanded, which are commanded that we keep throughout all generations forever. Go to the next slide because I want you to I want y'all to read this, this dictionary. Now, the type of Bible I have is a is a Hebrew Greek keyword study Bible. And in the back of my Bible, it, it has a strong concordance hooked up to it. Now, if you got the money, I would advise you to go out and get you one of these books because what I found out is that people are changing definitions of things. They are, they are taking out scriptures and passages of the Bible because this same Bible on the phone is not the same Bible right here. Definitions have changed. Scriptures have changed. So if you have the money, go out and get your physical Bible. But I want DJ, if you can, real loud. Read for me the definition of Christian. This is Strong 5546 New Testament. Definition for Christian. Read it for me. Christian. From Christos. Christos. Yes. From Christos. A name given to disciples and followers of Christ. 
versus that thing in NCI. It does not occur in the NCI as the name commonly used by Christians themselves. Hold on. Read it slow. Christians, a noun from Christos, which is a Roman pronunciation of Christian, a name given to the disciples of the followers of Christ, first adopted in Antioch. Watch this. It does not occur in the New Testament as a name commonly used by the Christians themselves. Because in Antioch, the Christians were what? Hebrews. Hebrews. Why would a Hebrew, the seed of Abraham, call himself a Christian when the first time they ever heard the word Christian is when they start preaching in Rome? <coughs> the believers of Messiah first came to be known as Christians as a, what's the affiliation of ridicule. Basically, Christians was a name they used like the N word. It was a name of ridicule. All right, so go to the next slide, son. So, Paul was not a Christian. And we got to prove that again with this Bible. Paul clearly, through the word of God, gave his resume multiple occasions. I'm just going to use a few passages. On multiple occasions, Paul gave his resume. Let's go to Romans 11. And one. And I'm going to read this. Romans 11 and 1. I say then. This is Paul talking. Has God cast away his people? God forbid. Watch this. For I am also in what? Israelite. Of the seed of who? Abraham. From the tribe of Benjamin. I sound like the Latin. He said, I am also a what? Israelite. Not, not a Christian. Not a Muslim. Not a Buddhist. He said, I am a what? Israelite. The seed of who? From the tribe of Benjamin. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11.22. Once again, this is Paul talking. Paul is giving his resume. He said, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they, the, once again, the seed of Abraham? So am I. Philippians 3 and 5. Now I'm only using a few scriptures. Before I read it, I'm just, I'm just showing y'all how the things we have been taught and have been taught to look down upon or frown upon is because we did not have an understanding. We are not Christians. Not if we are in Christ. Not, not if we obey his commandments. We are not that. Jesus never commanded us to be Christians. Never told us that. Once again, Paul resume, Philippians 3 and 5. He said, I was, circum I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Once again, keep giving his resume. Why do Paul got to keep giving his resume to people? Of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I am a Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law of Pharisees. Not what Paul telling you that he was a 
Hebrew, Israelite, but he was also a Pharisee. I have to interject one more time. You know how many times over the past few months uh, I've been called by family and friends uh, a Pharisee. Uh, uh, I had a Pharisee spirit. Uh, do you know who the Pharisee was? The Pharisees were hypocrites. Uh, the Pharisees were hypocrites uh, not obeying God's laws but pushing their laws and traditions on men as scripture or as law of God. And this is why Yeshua was so tough on them. And you could read that over here in uh, Matthew 15 to get a better understanding just to see who the Pharisee was. And I'm just going to read one passage from Matthew 15. And you can go back and read the whole uh, chapter to get a better understanding. And I just want to read Matthew 15 and 3. And this is Yahshua answering, uh, responding back to the Pharisees. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the laws or the commandments of God by your traditions? You know what? We find this in the church all the time. We, uh, we have pushed our traditions or our ways or our beliefs on people or our opinions on people and we don't follow the commandments and the laws of God ourselves. The Pharisees were people who knew the law, understood the law, but instead they taught their laws as laws of God. I just thought I'd put that in there. Back to the teaching. So now we know who Paul is. And just to go back to the Roman Catholics or the religion of Christianity, which they started, they are the root to the buffet of Christian faith. We don't follow God's laws. The church does. They follow Constantine laws. They follow the Catholic Church laws. The Catholic Church is the one put uh, Christmas as a holy day. Not, not God. The Catholic Church is the one put uh, Easter as a holy day. Not God. And it, it's one time that word Easter is mentioned in the Bible. They changed the word to Easter. Because the word Easter means Pascha, which means Passover. So they changed the word Passover to Easter. If you look in the Hebrew, that word means Pesca, which is means Passover. So they changed the word Passover to Easter. Uh, so you know who Paul was. So now we're gonna look at the other two times that Christian was mentioned in the Bible. The word Christian, not Christianity, the word Christian was mentioned in the Bible. Now, first of all, we understand that Christian was a derogatory term. It's read that Christians did not call themselves Christians. But now we got to use, use a little bit of common sense and independent thinking. This is King Agrippa talking to Paul. Now, look what the look what the, the scripture says. And now we get. I'm going to explain it later. Go ahead. Then uh, Agrippa. Say unto Paul, almost thou prestigious me. Right. Pre <laughs> oh my God. Let me, let, let me read my word. And I said unto Paul, almost thou persuade me to be a Christian. Now, let's hear it. Why would Paul, y'all listen. Mm -hmm. Agrippa said unto Paul, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. Now, why would Paul the gayest resume time and time again said I'm a Hebrew, said I'm an Israelite. Why would Paul persuade somebody to be something that he's not? The, the, the apostles were, were, were known as disciples or followers of Messiah. 
are followers of the way. Mm -hmm. Just like they changed Passover to Easter, they changed. It should have read like this in, in the tra in, in the original tradition. This is this, this is what it reads. Then Agrippa said to Paul, "Thou almost persuaded me to be a follower of Messiah, or a follower of the way, or a disciple, not a Christian." Because Paul was never, why would Paul persuade somebody to be something that he's not, and he never claimed to be? The second time the word Christian was used was in 1 Peter 4 16. I didn't ask the question to be mine. <laughs> I just I got you, I got you, I got you. Got this one? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yet if any man. Hold suffer, on, 1 Peter 4 16, go ahead. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. All right. Once again, Paul is writing this. A man throughout the whole book never claimed to be a Christian. Never taught no one to be a Christian. Why would Paul say, if any man suffer as a Christian, The original translation is, if any man suffer as a follower of Messiah, if any man uh, suffer as a follower uh, of Messiah or, or as a follower of the way, not a Christian. Paul never claimed to be a Christian. Next, next slide, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, boy. I have a question. Go ahead. Since everything has been changed, what is like the... What? Well... Okay. Nothing has been changed. Now, let me explain something to you. Wait, wait, let me get you. Go ahead. I was like the translation, since it's like not translate the way it's supposed to be. What is the right book to be reading or following? Yeah, there's a lot of Bibles out there. We gotta we gotta try to find the the, the oldest to date Bible. And some things you have to uh just use common sense and study. Because the Bible said that they were first called Christians in Rome. They, they have never heard of the word Christian. They didn't know what the word was. They never claimed to be Christian. Why would you claim, uh, just, just say somebody called you a crip. You never claimed to be a crip. Why would you say somebody suffered as a crip? You never claimed to be a crip. You never said you were a crip. So this is why, baby girl, we need teachers. We need to follow the Bible. We need teachers. And again, we gotta put the scripture together. We gotta understand what to study. The definition of Christian now, all you find now is a follower of Christ. They done took out the whole other meaning of Christian. They took out all that everywhere. So, just understand that if God never told you to be a Christian, the Christian faith started, the Christian, the Christian faith or the religion of Christianity started with Constantine and Rome. Period. It's evidence that they started Christianity. There's no evidence that Jesus or any of the apostles ever preached uh, Christianity or ever taught. None. Y'all call Israel his firstborn son in Exodus 4.22. In Matthew 15.24, Jesus was speaking. And this is what he said. He said, but he answered and said, I am sent. I am sent but unto the law. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Once again, this is Jesus talking. He said, I'm not sent to nobody else but unto the lost sheep of Israel. Once again, Israel, Matthew 15, 24. Once again, Jesus 
Jesus was already paving the way. But we're going to get to it later. Then, yes, Israel was a nation that God was, was trying to bring back to. But then God opened the doors for every nation to come in to the fold. We're going to get to that later. So Jesus said, I come not to nobody else but to the Lord of Israel. You see, the people of the world, this Roman European system that we live in, they have us thinking that the people over there that's in the place called Israel or the place called Jerusalem are the, 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 the Israelites, or, or they are the Jews. But the Bible says in Luke, look, look at that up there, Luke 21 and 24. I don't? Yeah, okay, don't worry about it. So, Luke 21 and 24, I'm going to read it for you. The Bible says that, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall be, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. So, basically, what the Bible is doing is, Repeating what was said over there in Deuteronomy. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall be led away captive into all nations, which is Israel. Watch this. In Jerusalem, our Israel shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles of the field. Now, anybody know who Gentiles are? Anybody that's not Israel. So, if the Bible is saying that Israel, that, that Israel the place was going to be trotted down by the Gentiles. The people that are over there occupying can't be Israel. Anybody got questions? No, sir. I see a hand spinning. Get it out. I don't, I don't want to confuse anybody. No, I'm not confused. And it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, bring it on up. It just makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. even as you were saying um, about the words in the in the Bible mm -hmm. and they're changing the words in the Bible, they're changing the Bible, and that's why it says that um, you, you you have to study to show yourself approved. For the simple fact of we, as as you said in the beginning, who said that we were Christians? And it goes down generations, not generation, but generations with an X. And these are what our mother and our mother's mother and our mother, just, just down. Yeah. And it makes. And, and, and guess who they got it from? And it makes so the much. The Roman European system. And it just makes so much sense, you know, because of what we have been taught. So, yes, this would be. Mind blowing. This is mind blowing because for me, I've never knew this. But it's mind blowing because you have to have an open mind for change. We always saying that we want change. We're always saying, you know, the word says that. Um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. But the word says that people perish for the lack of knowledge, that's right, that's right. and that's why I see us as a people perishing because we don't want to know the knowledge of the word. You see, what we have done, we have grown into this box of Christianity where it's about the whole We want to preach, we want to... I mean, this religious stuff. But that is, the Bible said they pray me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Why? Because the Bible says if you love me, you do what? Keep my, Keep my commandments. commandments. You and look. that's why I kind of feel like we lost when people ask, who are we? We are lost. Who are your, what is your identity? Who are you in Christ? And we can't tell who we are because we just say, oh, we're just a Christian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's just a, yeah. So once again, if the Bible said that Israel was going to be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And that Israel was going to be trotted down by the Gentiles until the time the Gentiles be fulfilled. Who the people over there in Israel be? The country Israel, the state Israel. They can't be Israel. 
Because the Bible says that we are scattered. Or Israel was going to be tracked down by the Gentiles. Israel was scattered throughout the earth because of the people, watch this, rejection of God's covenant slash laws. Are you, are, 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 are you getting this? Are you, you are? I did it. I wanted to get it. I wanted to do it. Uh, how much you got on this? Right. Let me see. Okay. How much you got on this? I didn't get it. Probably on that one. Let me see. You can go and get the last picture you can. Israel. No, 21. Get it on there? Yeah. All right. Israel was scattered throughout the earth. Because of people's rejection of God's covenant slash laws. Not much has changed. People are still rejecting God's laws, covenant, and statutes. Because we say, we preach, we teach that Paul said the law was done away with. When we got to use, it's a scripture that said that, I think it was First Peter 1 or something that said that Paul's writing to just paraphrase that Paul's writings were difficult to understand. So in order to understand Paul's writings, you really got to have the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. Once again, Israel was scattered throughout the earth because of the people's rejection of God's covenant. It was prophesied that Israel would be scattered among the nations of the earth because of the people's wickedness. Not much has changed. We are still the stiff neck, rebellious people. But watch this. But God is now waking his people up. And God is looking for a people that will not be ashamed to preach, teach, the truth. You know, people say they want the truth, but sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth brings you to a place where you have to look in the mirror and say, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. Now, this is nothing that I'm making up. You can find it through research. You can find it in your Bibles. Everybody knows the religion of Christianity comes from the Roman Catholics. So why should we? The Bible says it's going to be a religious system that's going to look to change all times. Basically, God's feast days and God's laws. Why are we following that religion? It was them that told us that we don't have to follow God's law, not the Bible. But now God is waking his people up. Is Roman, is Roman natural up there? And as Elijah said before, his name is, his real name is Elijah, he, he, I don't know this, it's, it's Elijah. Elisha's, Isis. Is, as Elijah said before, except the Lord have left us a seed or a remnant, we will all be as Sodom and made unto the morrow. Meaning, if God had not left a seed or remnant, meaning a small group of people that would still stand and guard his laws, we would have been destroyed a long time ago. You say? So, there got to be people who will stand up, preach, teach, teach and guard, and guard God's laws. In Exodus, he said he's going to bless the thousands, it's not going to be many, that guard his laws. 
Let's go to Zechariah 8.22. And this is what the Bible says. Listen to what the Bible says. I'm going to read this. And saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, talking about the last days, talking about days to come, in the time we are in now, it shall come to pass that, watch this, ten men shall take hold out of all languages, black, white, orange, green, Mexican, Chinese, and of all nations, and they shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, or that is a Yehudin, or is a Israelite, a Hebrew, the Bible says there's going to be men out of every language, out of every nation, and they shall take hold of the skirt of the one that is a Hebrew or Israelite, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Why is the Bible prophesying that people are going to hold on to a skirt of a he of an Israelite or, 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 or of a Hebrew and not a Christian. Yeah. I mean, you can't. I mean, it, 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 it's self-explanatory. This is in the Old Testament. This is the prophecy. In the last days. Me out of every language was going to basically follow the one who says, I am a Hebrew. Now, there are fake Hebrews out there. Everyone that says this in Israel, they are not Israel. If you're going to be Israel, you got to be able to accept all nations, as the book says. You, ain't, you can't be no race. You, uh, I saw a video of, 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 of I call them game bangers storming a church. No, that's not of God. He's not the author of confusion. Which is why I part ways. How can I teach this? Preach this? When my brother's teaching a totally different message, it would have caused confusion. So, since God is not the author of confusion, neither am I. It was best that I left. I have not left God. I would never leave my God. If anything, I found him, and he's opened up my eyes and my mind to understand this word. So who is Israel? We're going to, we going to, Israel is one that is going to, Obey God's commandments, keep his laws and feasts. That's who Israel is. And the one that had been born again. There was a time the Bible said that he went through our ignorance. But watch this. Once you come to the knowledge of something, you can't stay the way you are. There was once upon a time you gave me do barely knew how to drive, right? But once you learn. The mistakes that you made, you did better and you changed some things. The point of going to basketball practice every day is to get better. Why go to practice every day and stay the same? Once you learn, you grow. You do better. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to strive to keep God's law and commandments. Show sure is. So funny about that because you know God's laws and His commandments are not just in the Old Testament. They, all the they are all through the Bible. All the and so why can't why I, I I know quote unquote people say well the Old Testament is null and void, but no, it's not. The laws and the and the commandments are all through the Bible, telling us what we need to keep. Now, let's get understanding. There are certain ordinances that have been blotted away. 
such as, once again, the sacrifice. But God's law is an everlasting righteousness. And his law is the truth. The Bible says there will come a day where you have to worship the people are not going to worship in Jerusalem. Are on the mountain. They don't have to worship him in spirit. Which is the Holy Spirit and in the truth. What is the truth? His laws. Okay. A little vision I had. I'm going to be real short with this because I, I want to go ahead and finish finishing this. I want to keep going to hope, y'all. I had a vision of a road. Of a wide in of a wide broad road, and then the Holy Spirit gave me the scripture. As a matter of fact, I was sitting in a gymnasium doing my nephew's graduation, and during this time, this is when God gave me the vision because I seen a, a whole lot of people coming to this gym, and He gave me the scripture: a narrow. He found it for me. Google it for me. Uh, Matthew 7 13. Matthew 7 13. That's NLT. That's, that's, you know, we don't have to read. Matthew 7 13. Let me give you. Matthew 7 and 13. Okay. Matthew 7 and 13 says. You, uh, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. So anyway. You read 14? No, good. Narrow is the way to lead to eternal life. Wide is the way to lead to destruction. And God showed me this road. Now Christianity, now think about this. Now I'm not trying to attack, but just think about this. Christianity is the biggest religion on earth. Huh? It's a false religion. It's a religion. Because that's what you do every Sunday. A religion. It's the biggest religion on earth. It's a buffet. Of, it's a buffet uh, within the religion. You got your Baptist, you got your Pentecostal, you got your Lamb. Whatever you, whatever your taste for desires. If you believe in three gods, you go to the church of God in Christ. If you believe in one God system, you go to the apostolic or whatever. It's a buffet where everyone claims to be right. Everyone claims to be preaching and teaching this word. Now watch this. The Bible says many gonna come in the day and say, "Have I not prophesied? Have I not?" cast out demons. Just because you got power to do these things don't mean you are in Christ. He said the Spirit is going to fall on all flesh. That people are going to prophesy. Just because you do that don't mean you are in Christ. And the Bible says, once again, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you don't love me, if you don't keep my commandments, you are alive. Anyway, he gave me this vision of this road with all these people over there. And he showed me the religion of Christianity. But then I see this narrow row of people striving to try to keep this small statue. If the road is narrow, and Christianity is, is broad where anything goes, you can come and look in the way you want, any way you want to look. You could, I mean, there's no uh, standards, there's no, it's, come to church, whatever you, look how you want to look, do what you want to do, basically, just come to church. How can that be the narrow road? How can that be the narrow road? It's, the Bible said, only a few is going to find a narrow road. Only a few. So if there's only a few that's going to find a narrow road, where is Christianity? That's the many. John 4 and 2. 
Jesus, yeah, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. And he told her this. Ye worship, ye not know what. Basically, you don't even know what you worship. This is Christianity. They don't know what they worship. I'm just this trigger, 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 trigger. We say we worship God, but we follow the Roman laws. He said, ye know not what you worship, but we, talk about the Israelites, talking about his people, his people, but we know what we worship. Watch, 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 watch this line. For salvation is of the Jews, of the Yehudims, are of the Hebrew Israelites. Woo! Told you later, listen, you don't know what you worship. You don't. But we do. Because salvation is of Israel. I'm going to close this thing out. Here we go. Here's the scriptures. Romans. I'm going to break it down to this year. In the book of, in, in Romans 11, Paul was talking to the Romans, trying to convert them. He was telling them about this tree, which was God, and his family, which was Israel. And he used the, similar, the, the analogy of an olive tree. So the Gentiles are the other nations were the wild branches, meaning they didn't know about God, God's laws, God's commandments, God's ways. But we were the natural branches. So this is going to start off right here in 1124. You're going to take a turn reading. You're going to read for the read, read right here. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature. I'm talking about the other nations, which is the Gentile nation, which was wild by nature. Go ahead. And were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. So now he's talking about being grafted into, it's like uh, you. Your last name is Donaway. If I adopt you, your name finna be Williams. You gonna be what I am. So now he's telling the Gentiles, once you get grafted in, you're going to be what I am. Keep on reading it. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, which is Israel, be grafted be graft into their own olive tree? Meaning God was going to turn back to his people. Meaning, remember, first we was cast away because we were disobedient. But he's going to wake us, he, he, he's going to wake us back up. Here we go. Number 25, you're read me. You're reading so well. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. So, brethren, don't be dumb. Don't be ignorant. Don't get prideful, Israel. Go ahead. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Come on. That blindness is part, in part, is happened to Israel. So, blindness ha happened to Israel, meaning we have lost our way. Hold on. We was lost to who we are. But the Bible said I was once blind, but now I see. I see. Blindness in part has happened to Israel, but until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So until the fullness of the Gentiles come into this tree, to the fullness of the Dunaways. The Joneses come into this branch, for example, which is the Williams. So now you're no longer a Jones. You're no longer a Dunaway. You are a Williams. So no longer are you a black person, a white person, a European person, a Chinese. Now you are what God's family is, which is Israel. And then he said, what the 
forced of the Gentiles to come in. What now? In being what? Eleven. Uh, and so all Israel shall be saved. So once the Gentiles come into this family, which is who? The Israelites. It, it didn't say Christians. Nope. What did it say? Israel shall be saved. And Hold on, all time out. Did it, it didn't say all the Christians should be saved. It didn't say all the Muslims, the Buddhists. It said all of who? Israel. All of Israel is going to be saved. As it is written. It is written, watch this. There shall come, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And in... No. All of Israel shall be saved. I got one more. Two more, two more scriptures to read, so because I wanted, I want to make this clear. Anybody got questions? Esther eight seventeen. I'll read this. In, in in every providence, and in every city, whether soever the king commanded and decree, and his decree came. The Jews are the Yehudims, are the Israelites, had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many people of the land became Jews. The strangers saw how joyful the Israelites was, <coughs> how they praised their Yah. They said, we want what they got. And they became Israel. Last one. Galatians 3 and 29. We're going to bring it to you here right here. If any, if ye be in Christ, if ye be in Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed according to the promise. Heirs, heirs according to the promise. As if you be in Christ, if you obey the law of God, law of commandment, if you commit your life to him, you no longer pass you down the way. The American, you passion Dunaway Williams, the Israelite. So who am I? I'm Abraham's seed. According to the promise. Because I made it in my mind that I was going to obey God's laws. Keep his commandments. Walking his ways and statues. And because I made that choice, I proudly say, yes, I am a Hebrew Israelite, like the rest of my family was. I'm taking after my family's history. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. But don't ever confuse me for when one of them black ones on the corner. You want to know who I am? That's who I am. Any questions, any comments? Let me know. I'll be happy to address it. So now you heard it from the horse's mouth himself. I'm Israel because I am in Christ, which you should be. If you be in Christ, guess what? You're going to be Israel too. Any comments? Any statements? Any questions? Do anybody understand today's Bible class? Yep. I mean, it's, 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 is it clear? Is it is it like broke down that my baby passed? You learned something that didn't. You okay. never learned in the church. Okay. Go ahead. Like a, a quick question. Go ahead. I'm just I just been thinking about it. I had asked mama or whatever, mm -hmm. but I was saying if this is in the Bible and people studied it for years and stuff, how come they never came across it? 
they come across it, they just warp and distort things. They twist things around to fit. The Bible don't need all this new revelation. God has spoken. Yes, he might give you a better understanding of what is already spoken, but all this new revelation that everybody gives, God said this, God showed me, God, 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 God ain't saying nothing. Shut up. He's already spoken. For a long time, it's just a lack of understanding. It's nothing against it. Because I've, I've been there. Paul's writings, as the Bible says, are difficult to understand. Some of his own brethren, the apostles, didn't, didn't even understand it. Because of the law. He used the word law. But when you keep on reading and studying, you see what law he's talking about. The law of sin and death. The curse of the law. Not the law of God. Paul never spoke against God. Jesus. The Bible never contradicts itself. Today we got people got the Old Testament fighting against the New Testament. How? That brings confusion to God, not the author. You need to grab onto the skirt of him that is a you who be. I'm only Ellis. Dumb and unlearned. And God revealed his, his word to me as bright as day. When I say I have met the Lord, he has revealed his word to me. Listen, he has. Leave me in now. I just want to say I enjoy. I enjoy, you know. Israel! I enjoy. Shall be saved. We shall be saved. I'm sorry. I just enjoy it because, you know. <laughs> it's right out. Shall be saved. Um, he did. I understand, <laughs> you know, that first of all, I want to say I'm glad that you set the record straight for all the naysayers and all the people that say what they want to say because, you know, in this walk, you learn people going to like you, people going to dislike you. But when you speak the truth, they dislike you even more. But I enjoyed the lesson on today because it just goes to show, you know, the truth is the truth and the word is the word. And if you look into that book and you dissect that book and you study that book, you find out for yourself what God is truly saying. You know, we shouldn't have to validate what we do or who we serve because at the end of the day, it's all about him. He's right here. Shall be saved. We shall be saved. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Well, I hope your questions have been answered. I know there's plenty more questions that need to be answered. Um, trust me, they will be answered. Everything I do, I can find in the book. And let's clarify one more thing. Not everyone that says that Israel is Israel. Uh, even those, even those Pharisees that was claiming to be the seed of Abraham, Jesus said, "If you were, if Abraham was your father, you would know me." Everyone is not Israel, so don't be so quick to compare real Israel to the fake ones. The ones out there hollering on the, on the street corners that don't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I hope for some of you this is a, this has been an eye opener. This makes your wheels turn, and even makes you the more so want to get into your Word of God and study this thing out. Uh, I pray that you've been blessed. Once again, I know there's more questions out there for me. Just leave them in the inbox. Uh, I'll be happy to return it. If not, I know what folks been saying. Other than that, God bless you. Till next time. Israel shall be saved. We shall be saved. Ever of salvation. King is coming.
Productions.